Hello everybody! In this video I'm going to show you how to overclock the processor, system memory and graphics card. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you'll be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. I'll show you what tools to use and how to fine-tune your bias. In today's video you'll see the basics of overclocking. It's not going to make you a professional, but you'll be able to see what it's like and how to go about it. Getting to know all the aspects and becoming an expert overclocker takes a long time, but this video can help everyone who's new to overclocking and faces some difficulties in boosting their computer. Before you start, remember that all experiments of this kind are at your own peril and risk and you may end up losing your warranty and damaging the computer parts, so you should think twice before you start. And if you finally decided to go overclocking, make sure you have a reliable cooling system and change settings in small steps, keeping an eye open for any changes in the temperature and the system stability. So, let's begin with the processor. The base frequency for Ryzen 1600 is 3.2 GHz. In turbo mode, the processor goes up to 3.6 GHz without any overclocking. This auto-overclocking function turns on automatically when more than two cores are loaded to the maximum. If this frequency is not enough, you'll have to try the so-called manual overclocking. Experiment with voltage values, install additional cooling equipment, try various modes of operation to gain more performance and still have a stable build. Before you start overclocking, make sure your motherboard supports it. That is, check if this particular chipset is good for overclocking and if there are any radiators on the power elements. The first method to overclock your system is to use the utility AMD Ryzen Master. This way is good for inexperienced users, you don't have to enter the BIOS and make any changes there. You can find the link to this tool in the description under the video. Start the program, and you will see a warning saying that overclocking may damage your equipment, affect its operation and result in other problems, including loss of product warranty. When you agree and click OK, the program's window opens to reveal panels for overclocking the processor and memory and the profile panel. The first tab is for overview only, and you can't change anything there. There are four profiles to use with this tool, and you can select any of them. To begin with, bring the frequency up 100 or 200 MHz, in my case to 3.8 or 4 GHz, and increase the voltage to 1.35 V. This should be enough. After that, run some stress tests to check the computer's stability. If during the test the system doesn't freeze, shows no errors or failures, and the computer doesn't restart all of a sudden, you can try bringing the voltage down a bit. Using the trial and error method, we managed to achieve stable operation of this build at the frequency of 4 GHz and the voltage of 1.26 V. When we brought the voltage down to 1.25, it made the computer freeze after 8 minutes of ADA stress test. When you make sure the system is stable after increasing the CPU frequency, you can try overclocking the memory. The RAM frequency is divided in two and that's why we see the frequency of 1600 MHz. All timings are at their default values. You can check them with a special tool CPU-Z. In the Memory tab you can find all the detailed information. Now all you, need is, all you need to do is to change memory clock or timings and try different combinations to achieve maximal memory performance by bringing the frequency up or the timings down. That's all about overclocking the processor, save the profile and select Apply. Now you should run a stress test in AIDA64 or any other similar program. It's recommended to stress test your system for at least an hour to make sure the system is stable. If you didn't see any errors, failures or freezes within this hour, the overclocking attempt was successful. Here is the next overclocking method, this time with bias. In fact, it's a similar process when you have to increase the multiplier value and select the corresponding voltage. 
go to BIOS and you can watch how to enter BIOS you can find in one of our videos. Find the link in the description. Then go to Mi IT tab. For your motherboard model, the name could be different. Overclock settings or something like that. Choose Advanced Frequency Settings and in the line CPU Clock Ratio, move the multiplier values up by using the plus button. I recommend doing it in small steps of 100-200 MHz to find the value that allows your computer to operate without any issues in stress tests. If the computer is stable after you have increased the frequency, try bringing it up again in another small step. Then go back to the previous menu and open Advanced Voltage Settings. In the line CPU vCore, change the voltage. I don't recommend you to go any further than uh, 0.162, as it can damage the processor. My motherboard model supports automatic voltage function, but in your particular case you may need to select the suitable voltage manually. This is why the process of overclocking takes so much time. You have to try many combinations. When you found the proper values, stress test the system. With this motherboard, we can use the tab Advanced Memory Settings. You can select one of the available options in the line Extreme Memory Profile or change the frequency manually in the line System Memory Multiplier. To modify timings in the line Memory Timing Mode, change the value from Auto to Manual to unlock this option. After changing the settings, run the stress test again and if the computer fails to pass them, go back to voltage settings in the line DRAM voltage or increase timings in advanced memory settings. Use the trial and error method to gain best performance. In the end, the final goal should be to bring the memory clock to 3200 MHz. To avoid overheating the memory, it's safer to keep to default voltage values and try increasing the timings instead. Another important thing to mention is that you shouldn't overclock the processor and the memory at the same time. If your computer fails the stress test, you will never know the actual culprit. At first, overclock the processor and have the system pass all tests successfully, and only then try overclocking the memory. Save current values, run stress tests and benchmarks, play games, and if nothing goes wrong, then your overclocking has been successful. Look through general temperature settings or fan settings and enable emergency shutdown or high temperature warning at 90 degrees centigrade. It is especially important when you start overclocking your build. When this extreme temperature is reached, the PC will either shut down or give a sound signal so you can turn the computer off and save your CPU from overheating. Now that we are done with the processor and the memory, it's time to work on the graphics. You can quickly overclock it with MSI Afterburner. Find the corresponding link in the description. For starters, go to the settings. I recommend configuring them as shown on the screen. As you can see, voltage settings are locked. It is strongly recommended to keep the voltage at default values, otherwise you take a risk of overheating and burning the graphics chip. So skip the first slider and set power limit and temp limit to maximal values. Now move the core clock slider a little bit, it's the graphics core frequency. At first add 40 or 50 MHz and click apply. After all these steps, the system should be tested for stability. You can use the same 3D mark to run a stress test. If everything is alright, the test was passed without any failures or artifacts on the screen, you can, you can add another 40 or 50 MHz and repeat the test. When you reach the overclocking limit, when you no longer see any artifacts, take a 10 MHz step back from this limit for better stability. After all these steps, click Apply and if you want, also click Start Up to let the computer boot with overclocking settings. For memory overclocking, follow the same procedure as for the graphics core. Move the core clock slider to the maximal frequency you achieved in overclocking and then start boosting the memory clock. To do it, move the memory clock slider like you did it with the core clock for 40 or 50 MHz forward and then click Apply. Run a stress test and if everything is ok, move the slider forward for another 20 or 40 MHz and repeat the steps again. When you get the system to work properly with maximum possible values, the video card overclocking is over. 
like the processor the graphics card also has two core clocks basic and boost as soon as the gpu load grows to 50 percent the frequency goes up to 90 percent of the maximal value and if the load is 80 percent and more the frequency spikes to the peak value and remains there as long as the card is loaded that much after all, let's test the overclocked build and see how it fares against the, the factory settings. In Vinra, we gain an entire 7% boost. In stock, the general speed was 8334 kb per second, and after overclocking, it grew to 9047 kb per second. In the Synbench test, the processor scored 1009 points on stock frequencies and 1261 points after overclocking to 4 GHz. As you can see, it's 252 points up, that is, overclocking improved the CPU result by 25%. Scene rendering time in Corona Benchmark has improved from 3 minutes 40 seconds to 2 minutes 57 seconds. The build passed 3D Mark test uh, without any issues and with a frame rate stability of 98.8% in comparison with the stock figure of 97%. 0.8%, that's a huge increase of 1%, in fact it's not. In the Skydiver test, the overclocked build scored 30,308 points, which is more than a thousand points, more than the score at stock frequencies. In the Firestrike test, the computer has 11,000 points, which is an increase of 109 points from the previous result scored without overclocking. And as we move to game tests in Full HD resolutions with ultra-high and high settings, for starters we take Watch Dogs one of the CPU-intensive projects. As expected with ultra-high settings, our build shows 50 to 55 FPS compared to 40-45 FPS in stock. The frame rate is good enough for comfortable gameplay with a processor loaded to 50 or 60% at temperatures rising to 60 degrees centigrade. The graphics card load is 99%. At high settings, the FPS improved to 60 or 70 and the processor is loaded by 80-85%. It means the CPU has some potential to work with even more powerful video cards. The next game in this test is Need for Speed Payback. After overclocking, we got 90 or 95 FPS at maximal settings. The processor load was 60 to 70 percent. At high settings, we were able to squeeze out 100 or 110 FPS with the CPU load at 75%. As you can see, overclocking of the processor gave quite good results, but if you are overclocking it for gaming on a budget graphics card that will just bottleneck it anyway, it makes no sense to boost the CPU. Even out of the box, the processor is powerful enough. On the contrary, if you own a powerful video card and you want to get the most out of your build, overclocking the processor will come in handy. And that is all for now. I hope you liked this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.